Now let me take you through um, what I want to try and demonstrate here. I want to try and demonstrate this vapour barrier which I've got here against this vapour barrier. When I get to the end what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece of vapour barrier which I've just got here um, which is just stuck together and stuck on the top there open at the bottom. That box there is going to have that in it and what I'm going to do is that I'm going to pierce this one and I'm going to pierce this one and then I'm going to fill them up water and I'm going to see what happens because I'm asked all the time on how good a vapour barrier is and you put screws through it and it doesn't perform. Well the answer to that is two or three different ways. First of all if the vapour barrier is a good vapour barrier and is over the specification in the beginning if it's not installed quite correctly or it's penetrated it should still end up higher than the minimum requirements. Of course if you start off with a vapour barrier that is only just at the, the, the requirements needed and then you penetrate it and you don't fix it properly then you end up lower. So the, this, this vapour barrier is around about four or five times better than what the BS standard says that you should use in a roof. So there's room for movement. If it does leak some air then you at least you know that you started off at such a higher state of play and you've, you've got a downward motion. But that's not really what goes on here. So let me just explain here because I find on the field when I'm going out doing surveys of roofs the things that go wrong are the things that you just wouldn't expect and what people are um, doing. First of all they're not using the correct vapour barrier but before I go into that let me just show you what, what I'm doing here. Look, brick wall, joists, sub decking. At the moment I've got some ply because that's all I had in the workshop um, but we normally use OSB but it's a sub decking. The sub decking is there so that you can put, and this is what we do, not everybody does this, we put this vapour barrier on top and bring it up the walls like so and bring it up the walls like so. You see a lot of people who just put a sheet down and they bring it up the walls like so. Now whatever the chosen way of doing it, that way or that way, the next thing that they do is they put their insulation down over the top. I only had 70 mil insulation um, hanging around the workshop so I've chosen to show you how it's done with two pieces of uh, to make up the 140 then on top of that we always put again OSB on the top but I only had ply and you could use ply if you wanted to it's all got to be waterproof and that brings me to um, I'm going to do another video because recently I have been finding different plies out there being sold as being waterproof and they're not. So that's going to be a video which I'm going to probably do in the next week. So don't forget to subscribe down there. I've got to get the old YouTube bit in. Right, so now we've got that. What we would normally do is we would use our screw fixings and screw down. If I can find my screw fixing. So here's my screw fixing. It's got a screw that sits in it and will go down to about that point there. So this would normally go through right the way through penetrating the vapour barrier down there and sandwiching the whole thing together. We do not glue our insulation down now that often at all and if we do we have to use very special insulation because the glues won't um, attach to this silver very well. There's all sorts of problems and we've had problems in the past so we don't glue it down unless there's the manufacturers are actually telling us exactly what to do but then you've got to get into all sorts of different things in the respect of the deliveries on site have to be checked, the moisture content of the materials have to be checked because if it goes wrong I don't want it coming back to me. The great thing about a mechanical fixing is that it doesn't go wrong, it's fixed, you know it, it's either gone in or it hasn't gone in, it's fixed or it's not fixed. Another video coming is recently I've been going around looking at the insulation in different suppliers and a lot of it is soaking wet so watch out for that video that'll be coming soon as well. So let's move on onto this. I'm going to go back to the vapour barriers which are down below. Okay. So you've got your idea of the build up now. You've got to, you can see the height and how this is all going to get built, built up here. Oh by the way just so I don't confuse anybody I'm not sure if I did show you that on top of that when the fixings are gone down okay 
the roof membrane is going to go over the top and up the walls and into the, you know, you have a flashing come over the top. There's, there's all sorts of different ways. That's just a bit of EPDM that I had hanging around. So this just moved back to where I was before and move this insulation off of here. So here's the thing. Now, the different vapor barriers which are out there, which are sheet vapor barriers, you can't glue insulation down over something like this because it would all come apart because if you glued it to this, that means the other bit's got to be glued down. So you're always going to be mechanically fixing down if you're going to be using something like that. Whereas the manufacturers of this do say with the specialist adhesives that you can glue over the top of this the insulation. So therefore you don't have to mechanically fix it. Now personally, we don't like doing it. Mechanically fixing, I've already been there with it. Now, here's the thing. I see a lot of roofs failing because of this factor. Underneath here is a ceiling and underneath there is a room that people are uh, living in. The moisture content of the air is probably 55% somewhere around about there, depends higher, lower, around about there, okay? And that all that moisture is coming up. Now when it comes up, the vapor barrier is there to help reduce that coming through into the makeup of the roof. And yeah, if you do put a sheet like this down, what they're not doing is that they're not sealing it to the walls, and sealing it to the walls is gonna be really hard anyhow. I mean, you know, I just had this hanging around, which is a bit of silver foil that we would normally use for sealing vapor, uh, sealing um, the uh, insulation. And again, the manufacturers are so misleading. They say that you can use this as the vapor barrier as long as you seal it from the underneath. But can you imagine people on site trying to do this, okay, and then put the other one, it's just, just not gonna happen. Now look, that going around and sealing that, right, is, not the best way of going, okay? And I've never ever seen anybody, and I've seen a lot of this, um, try and seal this vapor barrier to the wall. Um, and the reason you wanna seal it to the wall is because you don't want the moisture coming up from there, around all those cracks around there, coming up and getting around into the roof maker. If it can't get into the roof maker, and you have gotta remember is this, is that if that was on there, like so, and you had, your insulation on there like that, and you had your, like so, if someone was really good and they went around and foamed all of that in that gap, say it wasn't fitted too well, even if they foamed that and foamed that in there, and even foamed the top of this, the chances are the back there, because that's only sealing the front, the back there, you're still gonna get moisture coming up the back, okay? So this is why it's important, and this is why this particular vapor barrier here, the one that we tend to use all the time is so good, okay? And if I can demonstrate, first of all, there's different ways. It comes in metre wide and 40 metre rolls. So, you know, we could go along and do the whole roof um, like so uh, and go that way with it um, and then put another piece just across there and up there and patch that area in there. There's got to be a, a thousand different ways of doing it but for demonstration purposes right now what I'm going to do if I can find an edge is I'm probably going to do it that way and it is a real um, uh, sticky hard business to do now the only thing I would say to you on this is this is that the manufacturers of this do say that this needs to be primed and this needs to be primed for this to stick down properly okay now because we mechanically fix ours down we don't prime these boards and you'll see how, how much this sticks anyhow by the time someone's walked all over this this is not coming up but we do prime the walls to make it stick and obviously here I'm not priming the walls okay so and look that's how good this stuff sticks so you would go along and do a roof and you would literally put your vapor barrier down something like that okay and then you're coming up the wall say or down the wall depending on which way you're you're thinking about it you may do that around the edges and you know this is the thing with this stuff it is just so so great and so sticky OK, 
okay, you know, something. Something like that. Now, you get the idea. Now, if this was already primed behind here, there's no way that you're gonna get the moisture come up behind all of that. That is so well fixed against, you know, something like this. I mean, the, it's, it's, complete, it's complete chalk and cheese. Okay, so we've been down that. And what we're gonna do now is let's just go back to what I was showing you here. And interestingly enough, some people do use two layers of insulation. Um, I do what I'm told to do in a specification, and normally the specification is one layer if we're doing 140 or 160 or 120, etc. But it's an interesting concept that even if you've got the vapour barriers incorrect or missing, and a lot of people don't put vapour barriers in at all, I can show you examples of that, and that's going to be another video because I've got specifications coming through from professional people and there's no vapour barrier on the roof detail. But saving grace could be if you were using two different layers and you staggered all the joints, you get a pretty good coverage and a pretty good um, stopping movement of air because the vapour is coming up with the movement of air here, okay? The movement of air is the most important thing. You know, what could the gap be all the way around the outside? A lot of moisture coming up into a roof. So we've got that there and we've got that there and we would put our fixing in there put it down push the screw right in screw the whole thing together okay that would be tighter there and if it wasn't you could foam that and on this example here um, I've got my EPDM rubber and just as a matter of interest not that this is a lesson on EPDM rubber you would do that that's called a pig's ear and you would just tape that you don't, the amount of people who don't do this and if you look at that I mean that's going to be fantastically waterproof no joins anything okay so let's get back onto this test so on the test we have this which is there and we have our other box so what I'm going to do with this test is I'm going to take these two containers and all I've done with this, say this stuff is unbelievably sticky, all I've done with this is just to fold it to make a little container like so. I'm going to put that on here so that that flat piece is on there and I'm just going to take this and drive it through very slowly because I don't want to rip it and now I can pull it out because it was only going into the, the um, okay so there we are and we're in there with our screw so there we go so there's number one and I can stick that on my stand up there let's just put a puddle of water around that okay so that's number one done and I am going to do exactly the same okay and I'm gonna take that right the way through like so and I'm gonna stick that one on there like so and there you go so just so so there's a lot of water in that one and there's a lot of water in that one so just so that uh, you know because I'm going to finish this video now I'm just going to leave this uh, leave one of the cameras rolling which will probably be that one over there and we'll just see how this goes so thanks for watching hopefully that's helped you um, with that vapor barrier and the way that that goes and it answers the question about the um, what happens when you pierce I mean both of these have pretty sealed pretty well that's brilliant okay and I don't think that's where the problem is the problem is no one's joining it around here so let's have a look how this test is going. First of all, the water that you can see around here, I think came through immediately when I started to jiggle around up here, not that stable. Um, but apart from that, um, I, I 
videoed this for about 20 minutes and you know I've got a few drips coming through so it's pretty well sealed and as you can see here nothing came through on that one so um, again I don't think the screws are a great um, problem it's the way that the vapor barrier and the way it's fitted and especially around the sides is what I'm seeing so um, as I mentioned earlier on, don't forget to subscribe because I've got a couple of other videos coming out, one about the ply and the other one about wet insulation. They're going to be coming out pretty soon. Hopefully this has been helpful to you and if you want any more information, my name's Steve from London Flat Roofing.